quarter million acres burned in California this year already. We have live team coverage tonight. ABC 10's John Bartell, Monica Coleman covering the Bear Fire, which is burning in the Plumas National Forest. Mady Gomez is live at the newest threat, the Willow Fire, burning in Yuba County near Collins Lake. And meteorologist Monica Woods is tracking the air quality from all the smoke. But first, let's get you up to speed on the Bear Fire. This is part of the North Complex, which has burned more than 250,000 acres and is only 38% contained. Fire officials say it's moving so fast, it's burning at a a rate of 1,000 acres per half hour. Evacuation orders are in effect for parts of Yuba, Plumas, and Butte counties. This is actually just south of where the campfire burned back in 2018. Let's go now to ABC 10's John Bartell live in Lake Orville, where many are being evacuated, John. Uh, yeah, Chris, hey, the smoke is very thick and the burn scars here are still very fresh. Take a look over here. This is what's left of a house uh, right off of uh, Simmons Road. That's uh, on the eastern side of Lake Oroville here right off one Highway 162. And this is one of the areas that was actually evacuated. And the reason that it was evacuated is that this fire was moving very fast and it was very windy. Take a look. With smoke so thick, it's difficult to see, but boats are still floating at Bidwell Canyon Marina, and California's first mother orange tree is still standing next to the historic Bidwell Bridge. But it's a much different story playing up on Highway 162. There is a reason these roads are shut down here. Oh my gosh, they're so hard to see. There is fire everywhere. Burn scars cover the hillside all along the eastern edge of Lake Oroville. Oof. Flames are not far. Up Simmons Road, homes in a tree-covered neighborhood are on fire. So these house fires are really random in this area. You'll find houses like this on fire down the road, and then just up the road, you'll find houses untouched by the flames. Intermittent winds intensify the fire. This time-lapse video shows just how fast the flames can burn through a home. Fire crews spread out in an attempt to put out flames and create a fire line as wildlife of all kinds flee the area. Get really close. Further down Simmons Road, water hoses were left around the home, but with weak water pressure, our efforts were minimal to get the ground wet. With each gust of wind, Phil Nye watches as brush piles near his home of 18 years burn like matches. Seems pretty safe here, you know. I got everything pretty cleaned up around here. And, uh... Fire crews keep a close eye, but Phil went to great lengths this spring to create defensible space around his home. So this doesn't worry you at all, like it's, it's pretty close. Nah, it, it could be okay. Phil ignored evacuation orders. Defensible space or not, the fire on Simmons Road is dangerous and unpredictable. And thankfully, uh, the wind have died down out here in this area. Uh, but I want you to take a look at this here. Uh, this, the major fire has gone through, but there's still some of these small fires burning within these trees, making it extremely dangerous for anyone walking through these forests here. And, and it's extremely dangerous as we go up uh, up the lake here. And uh, my colleague, uh, Monica Coleman, is actually up at Berry Creek. It's about 25 miles from here. And Monica, I can only imagine the damage you're seeing up in that area. Yeah, John, let me show you exactly what that damage looks like. I'm right off of Highway 162, and this power line behind me is down. I want to show you the power pole that fell right before my live shot right here. There's still flames coming out of the pole. You can smell it, you can feel the heat, and you can see the smoke coming out of this power pole right here. Just destruction everywhere you go when you're coming down Highway 162. And when I went to Berry Creek, we spoke with some people who say they're staying to defend their homes while others evacuated and are now for the first time without anything. We ran last night. We got half of our animals. We couldn't get the other half. We had to run and get in the truck and go. I'm 55 years old and I've never been homeless. It's going yeah. to be rough. I want y'all to take a look right behind me. This is Lake Oroville. You can barely see it, but there are still a couple boats docked out that way. But earlier today, it was a little bit clearer as the night comes to a fruition. It's getting smokier and smokier. The skies are orange, the sun is red as the smoke just fills the air. Chris. 
it is just heartbreaking to hear him talking about this new reality right now. The community really is devastated from these fires or Monica Coleman giving us a live look at what they're dealing with tonight. Uh, and I want to show you this with all the fires. People in the Bay Area woke up to look at that orange and red skies, the smoke blocking the sun. Some saying it feels apocalyptic. I want to show you a live look at the Bay Bridge right now. Again, you see that orange haze in the sky. Monica tells us more about the air quality and how dangerous it is for all of us right now, Monica. Absolutely. Now we are starting to see a shift in our wind coming out of the southwest. We had those predominant north and east winds yesterday, which brought in the smoke from the north complex fire. Now we're starting to pull in just a little bit from the August complex, which is, by the way, now the second largest fire in California history. Here's a look at our current air quality, and you can see some of the dots there representing unhelpful and unhelpful for sensitive groups. So we have some very unhelpful and hazardous air a little closer to the coast where we were seeing some of those golden pictures, those eerie pictures coming out of the Bay Area. Southwest winds, though, like I said, starting to change up this smoke pattern ever so slightly. Here's what it's looked like for most of the day, and you can see what appears to be cloud cover. That's all smoke moving through the valley. There was no clouds to be found out there up at the Tahoe Basin. It's actually clear skies with blue uh, blue skies up there. Temperatures meantime, because of the dense smoke, have stayed about 14 to almost 30 degrees cooler than yesterday at this time, holding in the 60s and 70s for the most part. It's warmer for some of the foothill locations that are actually seeing just a little bit less smoke. Again, tonight we see a shift in our weather pattern with our winds. That's going to push some of that smoke a little farther off to the east into the foothills and the Sierra. We'll talk about that and the cooler weather ahead coming up. Thank you, Monica. The winds are not helping the newest fire, the Willow Fire in Yuba County. This one started overnight in Loma Rica and burned to 1,000 acres. It is not contained and mandatory evacuations are in effect. We are going to go to ABC 10's Mady Gomez when we can, but reception, it looks like Mady actually is here. So let's go right to her about this Willow Fire. Mady, what's the latest with this one burning in Yuba County? Hey, Madison. So what I can tell you is that right now the Thousand Trails community is currently under voluntary evacuation orders. We're on Marysville Road in unincorporated Yuba County. This is about five miles southwest of Loma Rica, where 3,000 people were evacuated overnight because of the Willow Fire. Now, you can't see much from where I'm standing here except that ominous glow behind me in the sky. But let me show you what the affected area looked like last night. This video was taken by Cal Fire as their trucks were driving by a couple. Uh, you can definitely see the flames on their left and on their right side as they were driving by. Now, a couple hours ago, we were told by Cal Fire that the Willow Fire currently stands at over 1,300 acres with 0% containment. Over 700 structures are threatened. 14 homes have either been destroyed or damaged. Luckily, no injuries have been reported. Cal Fire says the cooler temps have helped, but the firefight is not over. The wind has obviously subsided, we're, and so that worked in our advantage. So now we have to deal with the low humidities that we're still experiencing and some of the rapid fire growth and spread that has to do with these steep hills and canyons that we're dealing with. You heard it there. The firefight continues now. I asked Cal Fire when the evacuated community of Loma Rica would be able to return. They said as soon as the fire is out and it is determined to be safe, they will, of course, let people know. Now, they couldn't give me an exact timeline because, as we know, fire is very unpredictable. But um, as things stand right now, we are looking a little bit better. I also wanted to mention that a cat was saved from a burning.